Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Krager. I'm the executive director for the NASCAR Foundation, and I want to welcome you all today on April 15th, Tax Day, but a more important day for us because it's our founder, Betty Jane Francis' birthday. And what a better day to celebrate her, honor her, and to celebrate our 15th anniversary than today. So thanks for joining us. And we have some special guests here that are going to join us today. And first off, I want to introduce our founder, our, I'm sorry, our leader, uh, Mike Helton, who's coming to us from Daytona Beach. Hi, Mike. Good morning, Nicole. Thanks for being here with us today. It's, uh, it's always fun to hang out with the, the foundation friends and, and talk to them. So and today's a very special day. So thank you. Well, you know, many things that I've learned from you over the past years since we've been working together. Um, but I would say one of the things you've taught me is that our sport, that NASCAR is bigger than just one person, it's bigger than one driver or one team or one sponsor. And, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that you do, that we do together, um, I think you can see that really today more so than ever. And, um, you know, what do you think as we talk through the foundation in our 15 years, you know, what would you say is really how the, uh, how the uh, industry has rallied behind us and rallied behind the foundation? Yeah. And I think uh, there's a benevolent culture in our sport. And we talk about NASCAR being a family because it truly is. Uh, and, and Betty Jane was our early mentor or the, the leader in the family that that encouraged us that work for the family, uh, whether it was at a race a racetrack or the sanctioning body, to to take time to be a good uh, community citizen and take time to to help others that needed help. And and before there was a foundation, as Betty Jane uh, would spread that culture internally and take it to. Uh, here in Daytona, the, the speediatrics at Halifax Health, uh, the, the support of the Alabama Institute Deaf and Blind in Talladega, creating another speediatrics in Homestead, uh, working with the Petty family on the, the Victory Junction Game Camp in North Carolina. Uh, that all started kind of creating a culture, I think, that, that we saw followed uh, in the industry, uh, particularly in the garage area. I know Daryl and Stevie Walter, uh, Rusty Wallace, uh, Dale Jarrett, uh, they kind of picked up and, 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 and kind of blended into those early efforts. And then he, uh, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson uh, come along and, and they both have uh, great legacy programs that will go on for a long time. And then you look at the current uh, drivers uh, or, or, or corporate or, or participants in the sport like Dale Jr. and Amy, or Martin and Sherry Truex, Kyle and Samantha Bush, uh, Brad and Paige Keselowski, and particularly Joey and Brittany uh, Logano and Ryan Newman, they all have very significant programs that that follow the NASCAR Foundation compass, and and they help people, and, and that's 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 really heartwarming for us as a business and a sport to see its participants. Uh, be of that culture. That's so true. I mean, and all of those organizations have wonderful, wonderful supporters like we do. And whether it's our army of volunteers, our employees, our donors, our board, um, they all mean so much to us. And I think they would love to hear from you. What do you say our vision for the foundation would be for the next 15 years as we embark on that? Well, I, I think we've learned a lot in this first 15 year stretch. And, and I think there's a lot of fundamentals that we finally got uh, a, a, a leg up on. I was starting to say a foundation built around, but that was going to be confusing. So, uh, but I see the foundation and the industry itself and everybody else in the industry that, that, that wants to do help for other people uh, just will simply just get better. We, we, we'll learn from experience and we'll, we'll modernize and we'll get better and we'll reach out more to people who need to be reached. Uh, hopefully we inspire others, but I, I, I know for a fact that we will be inspired by others. So I see the NASCAR foundation, but the NASCAR 
community uh, being more and more uh, aware of and leaders in this effort. Now, Mike, you and I have gotten to do some really fun things together with the foundation over the years. We've we've scooped ice cream together. Um, we've given out um, military uh, care kits on one of the hottest days in July. Um, we packed thousands of those. And I'm interested for you to share with our uh, viewers one of your favorite memories that you have from the years of something we've done to help the kids in the uh, racing communities. It's, it's, it's hard to narrow it down to one because every time you get the chance to see people gather and help others, it's, it's so rewarding. And, and the ones you mentioned, but, but uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy every year when we get to look at and, and meet uh, the Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award uh, uh, candidates, uh, the finalists, and then the finalists. Uh, it's always inspiring and incredible to, to go through that process and to, and to meet those folks and, and see what they're doing and they don't get much attention to it, but to dig deep into their efforts is, is a great reward. But the, the, the other experience that I had that I remembered that we were doing together up in Charlotte uh, with Rock Solid building a playground, which is a program that builds playgrounds for uh, cancer children, children with cancer that that don't have the opportunity to go to public playgrounds and things. They actually do a great job of going into the backyard of that home and putting the playground together. And uh, I got to participate in that one in Charlotte. And, and it was, it was so rewarding to be able to do it and see the face on Levi when he saw it for the first time. But the other part of that experience that I think I got the most enjoyment and pleasure from was seeing NASCAR employees from downtown Charlotte, uh, Concord and Conover, our different offices in North Carolina, come out and, and bring their families and all chip in to build this playground for Levi and, and truly enjoyed it. And you could see it in their faces, their passion about helping somebody else. And that was, that was really a big time for me to be proud of our own people to to see their enthusiasm for what we do. And sometimes we don't get to see that or we take it for granted. And so that was a big moment for me. Well, and I'll never forget that day we were hanging the swings and one of our employees' kids looked over for the tallest man there, which happened to be you. And he said, hey, mister, will you help me hang this swing? And you lifted that little boy right up and we got the swing hanging on, hung up and everything. and. That was great. That was fun. Well, before we bring on our next guest, you know, just real quick, what do you think Mrs. France would say about the journey we've been on? She'd be very proud. And, and, and I think it's on us to make sure that we always can say that, that Betty Jane would be very proud of what we're doing. So happy birthday, Betty Jane. And I hope we live up to, to what you want us to do. Thank you, Mike, so much for joining us. Thank you for always sharing your time and your talent and your treasure with us. We we truly, truly appreciate you. So now I want to bring on um, two special guests uh, to join us. I'm happy to welcome Betty Jane Francis' daughter, Lisa Kennedy, and her grandson, Ben Kennedy. Hi, Thank guys. You. Hi, Nicole. Hey. Thanks, Thanks for, for being it. here. Well, Lisa, I wanted to start with you. You know, we're cele celebrating the 15 year anniversary for the foundation. And what do you think? What do you think your mom would feel about how far we've come together? Well, I think she would be very proud and I think she would be impressed at how much the foundation has grown over time. You know, she was truly the heart of NASCAR. And I feel like she would be really honored that people continue to carry on the tradition and even just sitting here on her birthday and people still being aware, talking about the foundation and moving it forward. I think that would mean the world to her. Where do you think her passion came from, you know, to give back and particularly to kids? She cared so much about the kids. Mom really did care about the kids and, you know, she was such a great partner with my dad from the very beginning of NASCAR. And I thought she had a vision that 
we had a brand, NASCAR had a brand to be able to get out and reach many, many people and for a very, very good cause. Um, I think that she saw the opportunity to be able to really advance the needs of children, especially here um, at Halifax Health, where she started this pediatrics ward. And she just wanted uh, to be in touch. Um, she, she lit up the room when she came in and you could see her passion and enthusiasm. And Ben, from an early age, you're involved with the causes that your mom, your grandmother supported. And many times you'd go to the pediatrics unit with us. And, um, you know, why do you think, why was it so important to you to follow along in the example that your grandmother set? Yeah, I think it's, um, it, you know, first off, it's amazing, you know, what, what she has created around the NASCAR Foundation. You know, even thinking back to the early days of the foundation, um, I mean, decades ago across the street here, making paintings with um, drivers and being able to auction them off all the way to your point, Nicole, of, you know, what she has done around pediatrics and pediatric care at Halifax Health. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go over there when it was opened and, you know, seeing her interact with all the different kids who are you know, certainly having, you know, a, a much tougher day than, than we were. Um, and seeing her be able to put you know, a smile on the kids' faces and bring a, a bit of joy to her life. She was really good with that. And it was certainly a, a really um, you know, passionate project that she's had through the years. And so neat to see pediatrics continue to live on. And you know, a number of these other areas that we've touched on too, the over the edge, habitat for humanity, um, the, Betty Jane France, the Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award, um, it's always so neat to see all the stories that are coming out of that um, together over the past several years and, and looking forward to seeing that that legacy continue to live on. Now, I would say, Lisa, your mom had a really unique ability to rally uh, people around a cause that she was passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I certainly see that in you. Um, what's wondering, do you remember it was maybe five or six years ago, I think we were in either your office or Mike's office. And I come to you saying, I have an idea. Can we repel off this building? And Mike said, oh no, that's not for me. And you said, I'll do it. And I was like, really? And you said, yeah, I'll do it. And so from you, we signed up Rusty Wallace and then Ben joined on, Steve Phelps joined on. And I mean, you rallied everyone just like your mom did. Why, why would you sign up for that? Well, I was wondering that myself for quite a while after I said it. It just kind of came out, but it was so much fun. Um, the first few minutes, you were a little bit nervous about it, and then it ended up being so much fun. And I had the opportunity to go down the wall at the same time as Rusty Wallace. And um, there's a little bit of competitiveness there. Um, definitely he won, as you would imagine. But... I was a little slow to start and then uh, then you start getting uh, some passion and, and get fired up about it. But it was, it was fun and for a good cause. Well, we've been uh, we've had a lot of opportunities um, to do some fun things over the year. And I know you had shared another story with me about uh, we've been involved with Habitat for Humanity before yeah. and, and building homes. And, and tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, it was really touching. Um, the group that was out there, um, I think they they really had an amazing time, put so much effort into it. They gave me a caulk gun, uh, which was probably a big mistake. I didn't look like I knew how to use it too well. In fact, I think they uh, had to adjust. I had it pointed backwards at one point. So they saved me from that. Um, not sure that I was invited back too many times after that, but uh, it was so rewarding for the families that they get in there and uh, have a brand new home and a, a place to call their own. Ben, would you say um, what, or tell us what your grandmother's influence was maybe on you as you entered the family business? Was there any guidance or lessons that she maybe has taught you? Yeah, I think she always, you know, led by example. And I think the NASCAR Foundation is a, uh, is a great example of that. And I think that, you know, one of the things that was certainly admirable about her, she was always very supportive, um, you know, of me, whether I was in my racing career, um, whether that's go-karts all the way up to the truck and Xfinity series, or, um, you know, now coming on to the, the side and, the, um, you know, on the company side. So she's always a very supportive individual and, um, you know, she was always someone that I could lean on and, um, you know, it was neat to be able to go to her and, 
know, she had so much experience um, around this company and the sport and this business and around the foundation that, you know, she was a really good sounding board for me if I ever had questions or ideas. Um, she just had so much knowledge that was, uh, it was really valuable. So being able to have her to, to bounce ideas off of was, was always really neat. But, you know, she was always a, an incredibly supportive individual. And I think that that speaks volumes to uh, to where we're at today with uh, the foundation, everything going on. Well, Ben and Lisa, thank you. I, I feel like we can never say thank you to our supporters enough. Uh, it's such a privilege to be able to carry out your mom and your grandmother's legacy. Um, we have so much fun doing it. I always say racing is fun, but when we get involved and we're able to bring the kids out to the track, we have such a great time. And just thank you so much for all you do for us. Um, and we're excited to celebrate your mom today and to celebrate our 15th anniversary. Uh, we've pulled together a little video for uh, kind of a look back on our 15 years. So I'm hoping that the team will roll that for us. Since launching in 2006, the NASCAR Foundation has been dedicated to fulfilling the vision of our founder, the late Betty Jane France, to help children and families in our NASCAR racing communities. 15 years later, that passion has led to nearly $40 million being given to benefit the lives of thousands of children across the country. As the work of the NASCAR Foundation has grown, two pillars have continued to drive the heart of the Foundation's mission, the Speediatrics Children's Fund and the Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award. Originally started with the goal of bringing the excitement and fun of NASCAR racing to children's hospitals, Speediatrics Children's Fund has evolved into so much more. Over the last 15 years, the Speediatrics program has provided medical treatment to more than 700,000 children through facilities like our Speediatrics Inpatient and Emergency Department at Halifax Health in Daytona Beach. These efforts have expanded into racing communities to inspire children to live a healthy lifestyle through the Speediatrics Fun Day Festival program. Racing themed lesson plans, videos, and healthy activities showcase our sport, our drivers, and our team members as athletes who not only work hard and play hard, but also succeed by living a healthy lifestyle. But perhaps the most visible pillar has become the coveted Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award, named in honor of the foundation's founder and chairwoman emeritus. This prestigious award is presented annually to a NASCAR fan who has done exceptional volunteer work on behalf of children in their community. In 2020, the foundation celebrated 10 years of honoring 40 remarkable individuals with nearly $1.8 million provided to children's charities in recognition of their incredible work. And NASCAR fans have answered the call by casting more than 625,000 votes online to help determine 10 winners who embody the same spirit of community service as Betty Jane France. Although much has been accomplished, the many children helped, the tens of millions of dollars raised, and ultimately the motivation the NASCAR Foundation provides for people to give back to their communities. These 15 years are just the beginning. The NASCAR Foundation continues to look to the future and its commitment to carry on the legacy of its founder, Betty Jane France. Welcome back, everybody. It's so great to have uh, Mike and Lisa and Ben join us today and to hear about Mrs. France and her legacy and to see the video of 15 years. It's hard to believe 15 years of the NASCAR Foundation. But now I want to bring in two really special people um, into the to conversation for everyone to meet. And I want to uh, bring in Joe Vaughn from the Project Hope Foundation. Joe was our 2019 winner of the Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award. And I want to bring in Charlene Greer from the Boys and Girls Club of Volusia and Flagler County. Charlene was our 2020 uh, Betty Jane France Humanitarian Award. So welcome, Joe and Charlene. It's so good to see you. Thanks for being here with us today. Good to see you. Thank you so much. It's ha happy to be here. Well, you know, you guys are so special to us, but you're special to a lot of other people as well. And 
I mentioned it earlier, uh, as Mike always likes to remind me and others, NASCAR is not about just one person. And I think in the charity world, nothing in the charity world is about one person. And without our volunteers, without people like you, our organizations just wouldn't run. So, um, you know, you're so special to us. And obviously you're huge NASCAR fans and you're the humanitarian award winners. But um, Joe, tell us, how long have you been a NASCAR fan? 50 years now, basically. I'm 57, so I've really enjoyed it for 50 years. So 50 years. And then Charlene, how about you? How long have you been a NASCAR fan? 49 years, because I have pictures of myself as an infant <laughs> in car seats at the, the Darlington International Speedway. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a or Dar anyway, you know what I mean, over in Darlington. That's my home track. <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, that's what the Humanitarian Award is all about. And why don't you tell everyone, just in case they're not familiar, Joe, tell us about the Project Hope Foundation. What do they do and, and how long have you been working with Project Hope? Uh, we serve autistic children and adults. We offer a lifespan of different settings for different needs for children and adults with autism. Project Hope Foundation is coming up on our 25th anniversary uh -huh. next year. So that's big, but um, I've been involved with Project Hope 23 years now, and it's been a blessing. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I love the story that you were involved with Project Hope and with autistic children before you even had children. So yes, I, know it's I wasn't even married, wasn't even dating anybody when I got involved, heard a story at a Christmas party, and it just sucked me right in. <laughs> and they have never let you go, and I don't think they will. Um, Charlene, you have been involved with the Boys and Girls Club for how long? Tell us how long and then tell us a little bit about what they do. I have been involved with the Boys and Girls Club for about eight to nine years now. I'm, it's hard to keep track of the years. <laughs> um, but what the Boys and Girls, they provide a, a platform for these children and a safe haven, honestly, for the kids to come to after school hours. And they provide programming, extracurricular activities, as well as mentoring. It's just an incredible organization that provides the kids a safe place to go to so they're not going home to an empty house and, and their um, neighborhoods. Well, you know, I talked a little bit about uh, volunteers and, and the work and how valuable you are to helping not only the organization, but the kids. But one of the things being a humanitarian award winner, you're one of 10 and we've had 40 remarkable finalists over the past um, you know, number of years. Um, but obviously one of the things we feel so proud about is that we're able to give financial support to not only the finalists, but to the winners as well. And I just want to kind of catch up with you and see Joe, since you won and the Project Hope Foundation was given the $100,000 grant, can you tell us a little bit about what you've done with the money and how that's imp impacted the Project Hope Foundation? Well, when we received the money, we knew it would be a game changer for our organization, but we didn't realize how much it would change things. About the time we got the money a little later, the pandemic hit and everything changed. So when we serve a child with autism and we're getting funded from Medicaid, we always come up $10 an hour short. There's a $10 deficit. We can't charge the parent or the family. So this $100,000 actually subsidized over 10,000 hours of service therapy hours. And an hour of therapy for these children can be a life-changing thing for them because over 40% of our children are nonverbal. So, I mean, if we can get them all the therapy they need and get them where they can communicate with their siblings and their family, it is a game changer for the whole family. But this, this money that NASCAR gave our organization really, really did fill in a big gap because we were not able to have our normal fundraiser because mm -hmm. of the COVID. I mean, normally we raise around a million dollars in one night every year. The last two years, we hadn't got to have a gala. So this $100,000 was instrumental in keeping the services going. Not only did we keep our services going, we actually have increased our services during this pandemic and opened up another facility. So we've That's got eight amazing. facilities in total now. 
that's amazing. I don't think, I mean, obviously none of us would have ever understood what the pandemic would mean to, to any of us. So we're all reacting and, and um, working in some different ways. And I know Charlene with the Boys and Girls Club, because we're here, you are here in Daytona Beach as I am, um, we were lucky enough to be able to do some things with the kiddos. Everything was outside. Everything was with masks and all of that um, fun stuff that we've adapted to. But um, likewise, um, give us a little update on the Boys and Girls Club and, and what's going on there and what's happened since you've won the award. Absolutely. It's been really amazing to see this play out in front of our eyes during a pandemic as Joe. They, he won and they received their funding right before the pandemic and we received it during the pandemic. And what a tremendous blessing this has been to over 1600 kids in our communities. We were able to re-engage and reopen some of those facilities that we had to close down due to limitations that we had because of the pandemic and they were we were able to open up with safe numbers according to the CDC guidelines and provide the programming that they were used to having, especially during um, the, the going back to school months. It was quite a challenge because these kids, they had summertime plans um, and a lot of families were able to adjust to the pandemic obstacles that were in our way that come uh, school out school months once August hit and then moving through we were trying to figure out how do we provide the same programming that we are we pride ourselves in as well as that mentorship and we were able to get those clubs back open get the programming back and 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 stated and it's just been amazing blessing to again 1600 kids in our community right now that would have had nowhere else to go after school and now we were able to provide that and open those doors back up to them lots of fun things going on we and we have been outside the beautiful part about being in florida during these months is that we've been able to get them out get them on bicycles get them on on the playground equipment get them on the things that this money has been able to provide for them and really have a safe and socially distanced um covid friendly area for them to come to and feel safe and Charlene, you talk about the 1,600 kids, but time and time again, you have told me individual stories about kids that are, are sad, but then also heartwarming because the Boys and Girls Club is available to them. And I was hoping maybe you would just share the one story with me, with everyone about um, the little boy and, and his prayers and, and yes. it touched my heart. Oh my gosh. And I, you know what, I, I now find myself praying over this one particular child just to give him the strength and the stamina to move on. So in February, we were actually able to finally re reactivate with the volunteers, not just the mentors and the leadership of the club, but we were able to get me back in the clubs, which was really exciting for me to be able to re-engage uh, re with the children. And we were, we, we called it the Spread the Love Tour since it was the month of February. And we went over to one of our clubs in Deltona and there was a young man who came up, gave me a big hug, um, and he just said, Miss Charlene, thank you so much for everything. We love you guys. And, and then um, I asked him, I said, would you say the prayer for us today before we have our afternoon snack, which he gladly did. And he was so sweet. And as he was praying, you guys, he prayed and he said, thank you, God, for the Boys and Girls Club and for letting us have a place to go. And God, please keep us all safe and that no one else in our neighborhood will be shot. So this is the kind of demographic and the area that we are serving in our clubs. And this child felt so safe and was so grateful to have this safe haven to keep those doors open for his community, for himself, as well as his friends there, and just praying over his entire community that, that, that they remain safe. And it, as it touched you, Nicole, it, it hit such a chord with me because I thought, my goodness gracious, we've got a 10, 11 year old young man who's praying for the safety of his neighbors, that no one else be shot. And I just thought, thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we have and being able to keep these, these safe havens open for these children in our clubs. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, that gave me the chills and I've heard the story before. And I know, Joe, for you and your kiddos that are there at Pro Project Hope Foundation, um, you know, has to be a safe haven in a way for them too. I mean, obviously you're educating them and all, but maybe just give our viewers just a little snippet about, about your kiddos and how being there has impacted their lives. Well, four or five years ago, we had two brothers come in and we started serving them. Both of them had been diagnosed with autism. Uh, one of them was six and one of them was five at the time. So it's a life changing experience for a family to have one child with autism, much less having two children with autism. Mm -hmm. And about a year and a half, two years into the therapy, uh, the mother suddenly passed away from health issues. Mm -hmm. So now they were burst into another crisis moment. Mm -hmm. We were able to connect up with the church that's one of our partners. We got them extra therapy and counseling to try to help deal with this problem. Not to mention the fact that instead of having two breadwinners in the family, now the family just had one person making a salary. So financially, thanks to the NASCAR Foundation, we were able to step in, keep the therapy going for the children. They lost no time from therapy. We were able to keep everything going, keep the support for the family. I mean, at Project Hope, we tell everybody it's a family. And in mm -hmm. circumstances like this, you can step up and prove it. Well, now the young man, the oldest young man is 11 years old. Next year, he will be going into middle school in a mainstream classroom. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to have any more service hours. He's in great shape. His younger brother, we're still serving him. He's still going to need help along the way but they have both made extremely big strides. I mean, it's amazing what it means to a family when you go from the atmosphere of frustration, panic, not knowing how to deal with your children to having what we say somewhat normal children and you can interact just like a normal family. That's amazing, you know? I mean, and that's what it's all about. I think I feel so blessed to have both of you in my life I know that the families and the kids that you serve feel that way as well. And you all are just two of so many remarkable, wonderful people that I've had the pleasure of meeting and knowing in my journey with the foundation and the past 15 years. So I wanna thank you all. You know how I feel about you. I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do for the kids. Um, and I just, can't wait to hear more stories from you all about everyone and how you're doing. And, and, you know, I love catching up with you and I hope to be able to see you all at a racetrack really soon. Once we get past everything with the pandemic. Oh, yeah. so, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. My pleasure and an honor. We are so incredibly grateful to the NASCAR Foundation and everything that you guys stand for and the, the community commitments that you have made to so many different organizations. So thank uh, you. It's amazing what y'all really do do for the community that people don't realize. I mean, I've been around a lot of organizations, but the NASCAR Foundation is truly their first class organization. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. And to everybody that joined us for a little bit of time out of their day today, thank you all. I mean, we would never have made it 15 years if it weren't for our fans, for our wonderful board of directors who gives us the direction that we follow, for all of our friends, our family members, and everyone who helps us. Because I think Joe said it, you know, they talk about the family and we always talk about the NASCAR family. And we really feel like NASCAR is family. And so that means our racing communities. And that means all of the people that we're able to serve and help from day to day. So thank you so much. I'm going to just say it. Happy anniversary to the NASCAR Foundation. Today is April 15th. Happy birthday to Mrs. France. I know this would make her so happy to know that we're still carrying on her legacy and doing what we can to help kids and families in our racing community. So thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I know Miss France is smiling down on you. <laughs>